Okay, part, what is this, 12? We'll do another spell real quick. It's only 3.30 and I'm a glutton for punishment, so let's keep going. Alright, so for this one we're going to do a heal spell for when the enemy gets too close and they actually hit us. We don't have to create a magic effect on this one. All we need to do is go to our character components, find our player and MVP, open it up, go to our state machine, and this one I want them to be able to cast even if they're not in their ready mode. So I'm going to drag down from melee ready, hit add a new state, call it heal. Now I'm going to connect it back, but I'm also going to connect it to the initialize this time. And in our event graph, no. In our actual player and VP, I'm going to duplicate the cast ice and call it a cast heal. And on our cast spell node, I'm going to add a pin for our little flipper up at the top. We're going to do switch on int so now we got three spells we need to be able to get to instead of just two so if we pressed we're going to get our magic mode and then we would default this out now we got three so we need three so if our magic mode is zero then we want to set it to one if our magic mode is one we want to set it to two if our magic mode is two then we want to set it to zero so that it cycles through these all the time. And that should be good enough to get that working off of this. We will find out. We gotta do the same thing. We'll copy and paste the get current mana. Hook it up to or on to Promote this one to a variable called heal cost, which I will default out to, I don't know, 5 also. 5 also works for me. But off this one, instead of going into our cast modes, we want to branch and make sure our current health is less than, not less than or equal to, but just less than our max health. Because if their health is full, we don't want them to be able to cast, because otherwise it's a waste of mana. So, if their health is less than their max health, then we want to set cast heal to true with the delay then the uh, Move this out a little bit. Control C the walk speed because we don't want them to be able to run around and heal. So we'll do that. Copy, paste the cast heal, disable it, and move that up to there. We'll tidy this up just a little bit. And then we will go into our anumgref into the event graph. Control C the cast player. Get cast heal. Promote that to a variable called healing. On our sequence. Drop it on down. Drop it, drop it there. Com compile that in our state machine. For melee ready to heal, we want 
is healing tree. Then move. From our heal to melee ready, we want to We'll need to do one more copy and paste of that. Find out if they have equipped. If they have a weapon equipped, then we need to take it back to. Yes, yes, if they have a weapon equipped, then we need to take them back to the right one. So we're going to find out has equipped. And we'll promote that to a variable called weapons. And we'll add one more pin, drop it on down, hook it on up, compile. And on our new state machine, from heal to melee ready, we will find out if healing equals nothing. But we also want an and boolean so that we can check two things at once. Is healing false, but weapons and weapons is true? If yes, then boom, you go to where you're supposed to go. So on initialize, we want to also from initialize to healing, get healing and see if it's true. And then back to initialize, we just want to see if healing equals false. And that way it'll just run right back to where it's supposed to be. Alright, now in our heal graph, we want to find. Looks like this one is it. So, cast spell 01. Make sure it's not looping. Double click and open it up. It's 2.267 seconds. So, in our player and MVP, go back to where we have our delay, and I'm going to put it for 2.267. This one's getting a little messy. We'll tidy this up in just a second. But for now, it'll work. So in our standing one hand cast, we want to find out to about here. And about there looks decent. I'm going to add and notify a new one called heal. Uh-oh. OK. Add and notify. New notify. Heal. Enter. There we go. Not bad. And then in our anim BP, negative. In our player blueprint, underneath where we have all our other spells being cast, which we're going to tidy up a little bit, we're going to right click custom event heal. We are going to set current health and get current health plus we'll promote this to a variable called heal amount that way we can upgrade it later on give them a heal to spell that adds more health blah 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 you know that kind of thing so after that we want to make sure that our current health didn't exceed our max health so on our current health we're going to get a greater than or equal to max health with a branch branch there we go let's just be left click remember and if it is greater or than or equal to our max health then we're just going to set current health to our max health that way it never goes over and if it does it just automatically brings it right back down and then we'll do that. We'll move all this this way just a little bit and we will set our current mana get current mana minus float minus float minus the heal cost.
so that should be everything we need. So I'm going to set the current health down to 30 for now just to test it. What is the heal amount? Heal amount is 1. Wow. Okay, let's set that to 20. Heal cost is 5. That should be very right. And our, you know what? Let's go to our HUD elements, the player HUD, and we will drag out a text block. And we're going to bind this to create a binding, player ref, get, and we're going to get magic mode. Forget text scene switch on int. Hook it up. Add three of them. Right click the default, remove execution pin. Click the return node, control C, control V it out twice. And I think zero was fire ice heal. Alright, and then that'll update to be whatever our current magic spell is. So Let's test this real quick. Yeah, it's fire right now. Oops. Oh, in our anim graph, right, we need to set up. Get our anim notify of heal and actually call our heal function in order to actually make it do what it's supposed to do. And that should be. Well, I know it. Right click, add spawn emitter at location. And for now, we'll just put, type in heal and just do any one of them. For the location, we will get the mesh location. Get world location, and we'll just spawn it right there. Just to have a little visual effect of it's doing it. Now they do have to be in guarding mode in order to cast it, so but, uh, no. There we go. What in the world? But at least the heal spell works, so let's figure out why it's not going back to the right one. Healing equals false. Let's see. And weapons equals false. So if they're both false, then it'll go this way. If one's true and the other's not, it'll go the other way. There we go. There we go, cool. So let's check how long this video has run. 14 minutes. Let's do one more thing. Let's add a custom event called Mana Regen. That if our current mana is less than our max mana true then it sets our crap oh actually we need to get our current mana 
set our current mana. If it is lower than our max mana, then we will set our current mana. Plus float plus float. Branch this off. Promote to variable. Call it region rate. And set that to there. And then we will add a re-triggerable delay of. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at point two for now. From our region rate, it's going to be. Yeah, one. And then I will call my mana region function again. Once it's at the max mana, then it'll stop. But up here, I want to call mana region after we cast everything. So whether we're in guarding mode or not. So. So let's test that one more time, or well, one time. Now mana regens. We'll expand on that later, just to make it to where it doesn't regen too fast. But for now, there you go. There you got a few different spells in place. Yeah. but we'll fix on the region rate next time but that's it for this one so thanks for stopping by